Good morning, Miss Danny. God bless you. Good morning. Welcome to CYM. <laughs> Recording has started your morning devotion and prayer. Like and share. God bless you. I'm going to be liking and sharing as well. Good morning, everybody that's coming in on this motivational Monday. God bless you. Everybody. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. This is Evangelist Renee Sellers of the Upper Room Outreach Ministries in Waycross, Georgia, where my pastor is Pastor Samuel Sellers III. And we're live on this Motivation of Monday morning. And my prayer is that today's message will be uh, motivational. It will be inspiring. It will give you something uh, to think about. Uh, because this is something that we've talked about in our Christian counseling class that I wanted to share and just waited on the right time. I shared something in our women's group um, the other day about emotional manipulation. If you are a part of Victorious Women Connect, our Facebook group, uh, if you or, or if you desire to be a part of our Facebook group, go to Victorious Women Connect. I shared something in there about emotional manipulation manipulation but i'm not going to talk about that today somebody posted that term on facebook and i did my research listen don't give me too many words i'm gonna start doing homework and so i did my research but i realized that one of the aspects of emotional manipulation stems from a negative thought pattern a negative belief system and this is what we talk about in our class we talk about negative thought patterns so this morning we're going to deal with those we're going to describe some of those negative thought patterns we're not going to go over all of them this morning but we're going to describe some of those negative thought patterns that we talk about in our class in our counseling class on monday night and we're going to give you biblical tools on how to overcome them now this message may not be for everybody but i need you to put on facebook i need you to write this down if you're taking notes on the call i know it's for somebody because i always you know when I, before i get on the call i said lord number one the first but my first one my first prayers part of my prayer before I minister whether it's on command your morning or at the church or in an in a, a, a evangelistic service is Lord create in me a clean heart and renew in me a right spirit I don't want my heart to be in a place that when I minister it's, it's not God it's me and then I say Lord give me what you want the people to hear and the people includes me and so I, I it, this may not be for everybody, but somebody tell your neighbor, I know it's for somebody. So we're going to get right on into it. And we're going to go to Philippians chapter of four, verses six and seven. After Evangelist Paulette Griffin opens our broadcast with a word of prayer. And if you've ever taken our current class at Victorious Living Bible Institute, I'm, I'm working with a new curriculum at this particular time. We go in depth each week with different subject matter. One week we talk about anger, another week we talk about depression, and then another week we deal with anxiety. But I talk about crisis situations in that class. We deal with marital discord. We, we just go through each week with different subject matter. Our next class is January 13th if you want to enroll. But anyway, I want to deal with these negative thought patterns and I want to talk about how we can overcome. When I read this, when I studied this, I recognized that there have been times that these, some of these were me. Can I keep it real on a motivational Monday morning? Because you cannot heal if you don't keep it real. So I'm going to ask the evangelist Paulette Griffin to open our broadcast with a word of prayer. Hallelujah. Like and share everybody while she's praying. Lord God, you're worthy of glory. You're worthy of praise. There is none like thee. Hallelujah. If we have 10,000 tongues, we can praise and magnify the name of Jesus. all that you've done in our lives. My voice shall God hear in the morning, O oh Lord. In the morning will I direct my Thank prayer to thee. And we'll look up. We're looking to the hills from which cometh our help. All of our help coming from you. And we thank you right now, Lord God. I mean, God bless Lord, you. Another day, another opportunity that we can be upon command your morning prayer line with Pastor Samuel Sell Sell Samuel Sellers and Dr. Renee Sellers. Hallelujah. Good morning, everybody. Pray with us. Outreach ministries together. 
thank you right now, Lord God, for your word is that has thou commanded the morning since the thy days and caused the day spring to know its place. Lord, we thank you and we praise you as you bless this precious woman of God to bring forth the word this day, Lord yes, God, Lord. that it shall be planted upon good ground to come up to fruition as you called it to be. We ask that you restore, replenish, refresh, and renew her for furtherance of thy kingdom work. Open up our spiritual mind. Thank you, Lord. To receive from you this day. As your word has caused me to hear thy loving God bless you. For in thee do I trust. God bless you, everybody. Cause me to know the way when I should walk, for I lift up my soul unto thee. Yes, Lord. We know no other help but thee, and we give you glory and praise for all things. In the matchless name of Jesus, we say thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. Amen. To God be the glory. As I said, Today's broadcast may not be for everybody, but it is for somebody. In our classes on Monday night, in our Christian counseling class, one of the things that we stayed on for quite a bit is the subject of anger. Almost the, when I, Since I've been on this new curriculum, in our last class, we were on it for two weeks. Because a lot of times we don't recognize that a lot of people deal with anger, but for the most part, that stems from negative thought patterns. So I want to encourage you on this Motivational Monday. I really want to encourage you to write this down if you're taking notes. To take back your peace. Uh, can, can somebody write this down? Take back your peace. But in order for you to recognize what you need to take back, it has to be identified. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, listen, before the doctor can tell you what you need to be healed, he first has to give you a diagnosis. And, and, and anytime someone comes for counseling, number one, we don't see anybody who does not volunteer unless they need to be un involuntarily, uh, you know, placed in counseling or placed in a facility. Otherwise, people come to services because they want to, because they know they need the help. And one of the issues with many of us because of the stigma behind counseling and because of the, 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 the labels that people put on individuals who go to counseling, there are a lot of people, especially, can I emphasize, in the African-American community who do not get the adequate counsel that they need. I don't need it. This thing's going to stay in my family. And then while you, you're saying this thing is going to stay in my family, your family's struggling. You're struggling. There is, listen, can I help somebody this morning? Counseling is biblical. Counseling is biblical. There's a gift called exhortation that goes along with the ministry of counseling. So somebody say, take back your peace. I'm taking back my peace, but I, I got to identify where I gave it away. Oh, did I just say that, Pastor Sellers? I got to identify where I allowed the enemy to rob me of my peace. So let's go to Philippians chapter four. Verses six and seven, New King James, it says, be anxious for nothing. And in one of our classes, I believe it's counseling for change. When we look at this word, be anxious for nothing. Somebody say nothing. We say, don't give it a thought until after prayer. Can somebody look at your neighbor and say, I'm not going to be anxious about it. I'm not going to worry about it. In the words of Pastor Wright, listen, don't, don't, listen, don't sweat the small stuff. Don't give it a thought until after prayer. Be anxious for not one thing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God or the oh God and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding or all human comprehension where God watch this now your hearts and minds mm -hmm. it says hearts somebody say and minds through Christ Jesus and so somebody say I'm taking back my peace take back your peace we are overcoming negative thought patterns on this morning and for some people this is going to be a process listen take good notes this morning because then i want you to declare when this broadcast is over i want you to declare that negative thoughts no longer have power over me i need you to write this down if you're taking notes let's get started let's go ahead and practice negative thoughts will no longer have power over me listen i listen i give oh god cast my cares upon the lord where did i lose my peace where did i give my peace away whether i allowed the enemy to rob me of peace i don't know about you but i'm taking it back today and i'm taking it back by force can somebody shout amen today and say take back your peace can i get you to encourage your neighbor to take it back take it back i'm taking it back never no, negative thoughts at listen will no longer have power over me come on somebody and so we know that life 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 be life in <laughs> 
Somebody said life be life. And we know that things happen. We know that we go through challenges. Even the Bible, Jesus says in this life, you will have tribulation. But what? watch this now. Oh, here it is, uh, uh, Pastor Lady Anderson. Jesus says in this life, I believe it's uh, John 16, 33, I believe it is. He says in this life, you will have tribulation. But here's what Jesus says. He says, be of good cheer. In other words, don't allow what you go through to rob you of your joy. Don't allow what you go through to rob you of peace. Come on, somebody. Don't allow that situation to rob you of that peace that surpasses all human comprehension. We deal with things in life. We have stressors. We have concerns and a lot of noise that is going on around us. I was watching one of the political uh, rallies on last night, and I was listening to all the noise which is really propaganda. Okay. I said it. I said it. Listen, it's okay. Come for me. I got my peace back. I'm not going to worry about it. It, what I'm really hearing, listen, what I heard in this particular rally was, was similar to what I heard when I did a study on Adolf Hitler. When I did some research on Adolf Hitler and some of the noise that he was making, the propaganda that he was issuing and the, the lies that he was telling to influence the thinking of the people. To influence the thinking of the people. But so somebody look at your neighbor and say, I got to guard my gates. I got to guard my gates. And the Bible says, guard your heart. Because out of it flows the issues of life. The vicissitudes, as they say, of life, ladies and gentlemen. Those thoughts, watch this now. Thoughts, listen, worry, anxiety, stress, and all the noise that we're listening to. Ladies and gentlemen, listen. I said, I told, and, and she probably don't come in your morning, but I told one of my relatives, you know, trying to, you know, encourage me, you know, how I should vote. I said, you can save your speech because I'm not going to be moved by outside noise. I need you to write this down if you're taking notes. I, listen, listen, it's okay. I understand what, what we're trying to do. But 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 listen, I, in this situation, in, in some things, ladies and gentlemen, you cannot be moved by outside noise. There are listen, there are some moments, ladies and gentlemen. Well, listen, ninety nine point nine, a hundred and ten percent of the time, you can't be moved by outside noise. And so thereby, the, the, listen, the worries and the stress and the thoughts will make us feel anxious. They can make us feel anxious. They can make people feel defeated. They can cause you to feel overwhelmed. But as followers of Jesus Christ, I need my brothers and sisters, as my daughter said on yesterday, my immediate family, this this morning to I need to remind you that we are responsible for protecting our peace. We serve the Lord of peace. But we are responsible for protecting the peace. The Bible says he is, or we know him as Jehovah Shalom, the Lord of peace. And so thereby, we are responsible for protecting our peace. We're responsible for guarding our heart against any thoughts that we recognize that can interfere with our thinking. And this is why my daughter said uh, we got to have boundaries. But I like to say healthy boundaries. And, and you can have boundaries, but unhealthy boundaries will cause you to be easily offended. It will cause you to be superstitious when there's no need to be superstitious. Not superstitious, but suspicious. There it is. We talked about superstition in Bible study last Wednesday. It's still on my mind. Watch this. See how things influence your mind? Just came back to me that quick. So, uh, 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 suspicious of things that we have no reason to be suspicious because the Bible gives us a special gift that helps us to no longer be suspicious. The Lord has given us a special gift. So I don't have to be suspicious when I have the gift of discerning of spirits. When I have the, the, the supernatural ability to tell what's God and what's not. Come on, somebody. I don't have to be suspicious when God has given us a special gift that we can discern truth from lies. <laughs> and so as we talked about the whole armor of God on yesterday, you know, when you talk about protecting your peace or taking back your peace, think of it like a soldier putting on his armor. The soldier puts on his armor to stay safe in order to be protected. So I'm going to provide some tools from scripture this morning 
that you can use, watch this now, to take your peace back. Come on, somebody, to take your peace back. And on this Motivational Monday, we're going to talk about some negative thought patterns that many people deal with but struggle to overcome. A lot of people do not even recognize that this is something that is influencing that not only their thoughts, but their behavior and their responses to other people. And as someone who is a, a servant leader or, or is in leadership in the church, I am learning to, to understand that a lot of times people's responses to us have nothing to do with us. It did not start with us. A lot of times those negative thoughts and those negative attitudes, it started with somebody else, usually something that happened in childhood. And therefore, ladies and gentlemen, especially those of us in pastoral ministry, when we understand this, it, we are able to have a greater level of compassion for the people that we serve. That does not mean that we got to endure disrespect. That does not mean we got to allow people to step all over us and be disrespectful. No, that's not what that means. Your mom and daddy listening ain't going to even let that happen. But what it does mean is that you can have a greater level of, of compassion for people when you understand that a lot of of the behavior, a lot of characteristics did not start with you. It didn't start with you. You listen, something you did may have triggered a response, but it didn't start with you. Can, can I get you to look at your neighbor and say, it didn't start with me? It, it didn't start with me. So listen, you can listen, take the guilt off your shoulders, take the guilt, take it off you, and pray for the individual because it did not start with you. Something happened that triggered a response from something that occurred generally. Most of the time at childhood. And so we're going to provide the tools to overcome these negative thoughts. And I'm going to tell you a story. So you got to stay with me about a girl. I got another story for you named Sarah. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So this verse lets us, us know how powerful prayer and thanksgiving can be in fighting against anxiety and negative thoughts. Worship enables us to fight against anxiety and negative thoughts. The word enables us to fight against anxiety and negative thoughts. Worship and prayer enables us to fight against anxiety and negative thoughts. And when we bring our worries to God, I've been, you know, you know, ministering to, uh, you know, an, an elderly family member and trying to encourage them, bring those worries to God. The Lord's peace will protect our heart and mind. Good morning. God bless you. The Lord's peace will protect our heart and mind. And by focusing on the word of God, Pastor Sellers, we can learn to replace negative thoughts with God's truth. Write that down if you're taking notes. By focusing and, and applying the word of God, can somebody look at your neighbor and say, Dr. Sellers is still waiting on her t-shirt. The Bible way always works. I think I'm going to have to get it made myself. I'm going to do it myself. <laughs> the Bible way always works. Because when we focus on what God has said about us, then what others have said about us and those, the, the, the seeds, because remember, words are seeds. And we come against every word curse that has been spoken over your life. We come against every negative word that has been spoken over your life. We declare that you are a child of God, that you are fearfully and wonderfully made, that you have the victory over this. Because what has happened is that word was a seed and that seed was planted in the hearts of individuals. That negative word was a seed and that seed was planted in the heart. So in our counseling class on Monday night, we discover or we discuss negative thought patterns of which many people have allowed to hold them hostage. You're being held hostage because of something, some word, something that somebody said. And now that thing has taken root in your heart. What they said about you, what happened to you. You know, the trauma that you went through and, and, and watch this now, unforgiveness, resentment, listen, will cause those negative thoughts to remain. And those negative thoughts are what are, is what is keeping a lot of believers prisoners, prisoners to their thoughts. Come on, somebody prisoners to negative thoughts. But look at your neighbor said today, not today, after today, these negative thoughts would no longer have power over me. So let's talk about it this morning. 
And some of these things you may be aware of. And some of these things you may not be. Well, let me say this. I believe that when we become aware of what's in us, then we'll start making the necessary changes. Let me say that again. This is why part of our class is where our students have to, you know, answer questions relative to themselves so they can become more aware what is in them so that we can more effectively help other people. And I believe that when we are really aware of the things that are in us, we'll do, we'll make the necessary changes. Can somebody say you can change it with a choice? You can change it when you recognize that this is something that I am struggling with. And watch this now. And watch this. We don't even recognize that some of our negative thoughts, listen, cause negative behaviors and they're affecting our relationships at home <laughs> and they're affecting relationships with others outside the home. And so, ladies and gentlemen, you, we have to have to become more aware. So watch this. Today's Mo Motivation Monday is raising our awareness. Let's talk about mind reading this morning. This is one of the things that I had to check myself on. Mind reading is assuming you know what other people are thinking, especially what they're thinking about you. Are you taking notes this morning? There's my niece this morning. Are you taking notes? Mind reading, assuming you know. Well, uh, and the key word is assuming. Assumption is one of the biggest enemies of destiny. Can somebody write that down? Assuming you know what people are thinking, often with a negative spin. Come on, somebody. You know, you believe that somebody dislikes you and they ain't even thinking about you. We believe that somebody has something against us and they're really not thinking about us. And, and you know, you, you know, we really get it, you know, as preachers, they're th they, they talking about me. They're they, they talking about me, throwing off on me. And watch this. We're just preaching the word. It just happened to be for you. But until we accept that and acknowledge that, then as they did with Paul in Acts chapter 14, we'll stone the preacher instead of turning and saying, Lord, what can I learn from this? Instead of receiving what needs to be received and getting to a place of deliverance. I said this on Friday. I said, I said, you know, you know when that word is for you. But the more we reject it, the longer it's going to take for us to see deliverance in that area. Let me say that again. The more we reject and one of the reasons that we may feel that, that you know, if, if we feel that, that, that they're talking about me, then they just might be. That word just might be for you. It was those in the book of Acts that that word was for that became offended with the word that could have set them free. Had they not killed the preacher, had they not killed Stephen and tried to stone Paul. And so, and so if we continue to reject it instead of being receptive, it is going to take that much longer to see deliverance and a lot of other obstacles a lot of other things occur when we reject what god is saying and, and what he's doing to try to bring us to a place of deliverance and so what happens with mind reading this is where that there that it can lead to unnecessary feelings of rejection and unnecessary feelings of paranoia that is paranoia when we think or assume something only to find out later that our assumptions were not valid. I said this not too long ago, that one of the enemy's tactics against believers is to cause us to think something is true when it's really not. Somebody say mind reading this morning is, is one of those negative thought patterns that we're going to overcome. Somebody say, I'm taking back my peace this morning. I'm taking back my peace. Number two, the second negative thought pattern that we talk about in our class is overgeneralization. Lakeisha Roberts, can you write these down for me? Overgeneralization. What is overgeneralization? Taking a single event. <laughs> okay. Taking a single event and drawing a broad sweeping conclusion from one event. Mm. For, uh, I can say a lot about that one, but some examples or, you know, you know, if you fail at something, you know, you, you tell yourself, I'm going to always be a failure. 
You know, if you didn't get it right or you didn't get it right that time, you tell yourself, I'm never going to get it right. All because of one event. All because of one event. But somebody said, I'm taking back my peace. Overgeneralization can make small setbacks feel like they're, they're going to last forever. And listen, those small setbacks, it'll make you feel like they're going to they're gonna affect everything. But look at your neighbor and tell them, listen, that setback, listen, is preparation for a comeback. Listen, get rid of those negative thoughts. Take back your peace. Somebody said, I'm taking back my peace this morning. And then there is black or white or all or nothing thinking. Viewing situations with no middle ground. For example, I'm either, either a total success or a total failure. Come on, somebody. All or nothing thinking. Listen, this kind of thinking can be discouraging and overlooks the fact that some situations are not so simple. They're not as simple as black or white. And this, and watch this. A lot of times individuals with black or white thinking or all or nothing thinking, those are the individuals that refuse to come to a middle ground and otherwise, in other words, refuse to compromise. And I'm not talking about compromising your integrity. All or nothing thinking, I'm, I'm, uh, it's either going to be my way or the highway. Come on, somebody. It's going to be my way or it's, if it's not my way, it's not right. All or nothing thinking. This has adversely affected many relationships, including marriages. All or nothing thinking. It's only what I, what this, if it's not my way, then we're not going to do it at all. And a lot of good people, a lot of smart people, struggle with relationships because of this kind of negative thinking. Let me take a quick break for Station ID. We're talking about taking back our peace. Somebody say, I am taking back my peace. Dr. Sellers is breaking it down this morning. I got to take notes this morning and I have to re become more aware. This is an opportunity to become aware of what is in us. Dr. Phillips, God bless you this morning. We are live at five on WHLJ 97.5 FM, Statenville, Valdosta, Moultrie, Georgia. You can join us online this morning at foxyfoxy97.com. You can join us on the call and Facebook Live. The call is 267-807-9611, access code 266-590. And I believe Dr. Tori Phillips is going to be with us this Friday. I believe it's this Friday on Command Your Morning. So we're talking about, we're raising awareness about dealing with these negative thought patterns. Mind reading, overgeneralization, Black and white are all or nothing thinking. And then mental filtering. Write this down, Lakeisha. Mental filtering. <laughs> Focusing only on the negative aspects of a situation while ignoring the positive. Are you taking notes? Are you becoming more aware <laughs> this morning of what's in you? Are you becoming more aware? Focusing. So it, listen, think about those moments. Where, uh, listen, uh, the positives outweigh the negatives and you only focus on the negatives. Come on, somebody. And here's the problem. There are, the enemy does not even want us to recognize these things. Listen, we're working to become more aware and the enemy will block, will blind our minds so that we don't even recognize those things in us that need to be changed. So that we don't even recognize. But watch this, the Holy Spirit will help us see us. Come on, somebody. The Holy Spirit does not bring condemnation, but the Holy Spirit does bring conviction. And the Holy Spirit will convict us on what needs to be changed. Listen, focusing only on the negative aspects, ladies and gentlemen. So, so let me give you an example. You get mostly positive feedback, but hear one critique, and then you only focus on the critique. You only focus on the critique. You have an event, you know, you know, you're, you're on the flip side of this mental, mental filtering. You, you have an event and, and you have people with all the good things that occurred at the event. You got people that are only focusing on what went wrong. Negative thought patterns. The, the, the people were blessed. The, the, the service went well, but you got those individuals who are only going to focus on what was wrong. 
Somebody look at your neighbor and tell them, I am taking back my peace because a lack of peace, a lack of peaceful resolve is what leads to these negative thought patterns. Listen, somebody say, let's take back our peace. Let's get rid of mental filtering instead of focusing only on the negative. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, listen, find something positive. Listen, if you're only looking for the negative, that's all you're going to find. If you're only looking for something to be wrong and sometimes people will literally sit back and look for a reason, look for something to go wrong. They'll look and find something wrong. That watch this now. Watch listen, there's nothing wrong with you, but there is something wrong with that individual and that negative thought pattern. Let's get delivered today. Let's get delivered today. Take back your peace. And the last one that I'm gonna talk about, but this is not the last one we discussed in our class, is should statements. Holding yourself to rigid standards. I should always be successful. I should never make a mistake. Do you know there are people that, that get messed up? I, I used to have a problem making mistakes. Now I recognize mistakes are part of life. I like doing things in excellence now. Excellence is the standard. But I used to beat myself up about making a mistake. When these unrealistic standards are not met, it can make us feel guilty. It can make us feel like we're not good enough. It will cause us to be frustrated. Come on, somebody. But where do these negative thought patterns come from? I got a little bit of time and a lot to talk about. Where do they come from? Number one, what we believe about ourselves. A lot of negative thoughts come from what we believe or feel about ourselves. In other words, when we see ourselves, you know, in light of other people's opinion, when we see ourselves in light of, of things that happened in the past, we, we neglect to see ourselves in light of who Christ is or who we are in Christ. And when you begin to see yourself as who you are in Christ, you are no longer allow those negative thought patterns to be a part of your way of thinking. Come on, somebody. And so past experiences, a lot of negative thought patterns comes from people's trauma, come from their bad experiences with people. And I'm, I'm learning, ladies and gentlemen, that a lot, of the, a lot of people's responses to us did not start with us. Come on, somebody. You have to be able to recognize that so that we can try to help the individual, but that person has to, gotta, has to want help. They got to want y'all listen to that. Listen, they got to want help. You can pray for them, but they got to want to be delivered from this past experiences, bad experiences, rejection, being criticized, being wounded. My daughter talked about soul wounds on yesterday. She talked about wounded souls on yesterday and a person who is wounded will wound others. Come on, somebody. I used to say hurt people, hurt people, but I changed that hurting people. Hurting people hurt people because if we just stop with the hurt, ing is something that is continuous. And when I'm no longer hurt, I will I will stop hurting other people. So hurting people, uh huh, hurt people, ing, because of past experiences, trauma, rejection, things that they have not gotten over, their soul has been wounded. And so now this results in negative thinking, ladies and gentlemen, their mind, their will, emotions have been adversely affected by some type of trauma. And now their thinking pattern has been affected. Listen, self-criticism is an issue. But the Bible says in first Philippians chapter four, be anxious for nothing. How are negative thoughts and anxiety connected? Write this down. If you're taking notes, how are negative thoughts and anxiety connected? Negative thoughts amplify our fears people with these negative thoughts which stem from past experiences often fear relationships and i heard somebody say yesterday that a lot of people struggle to embrace the love that you want to give because of past rejection afraid they're gonna be hurt again come on somebody and the moment you do something that reminds them 
of what somebody else did, even though you don't realize it, even though it was not intended, no harm was intended. The mind goes there. The mind is triggered by what's happening now, but it was rooted in something that happened way back when. I need somebody to look at your neighbor and say, today I'm taking back my peace. Today I'm setting healthy boundaries and setting healthy boundaries does not mean I got to isolate myself from people. Setting healthy boundaries, one aspect is that when I'm around people, I am mindful of my responses. I still can protect my heart, even if I cannot stay completely stay away from people. You can't stay away. You can't isolate yourself. You cannot isolate yourself. Negative thoughts amplify fears and, and it leads to increased anxiety. And when anxiety is increased, our ability to make sound decisions is adversely affected. Today, I'm taking back my peace. And so one commentary said that anxiety often manifests physically, leading to symptoms like a racing heart or, or sweating or difficulty breathing. And I am, I think I'm already doing a pretty good job of body language, reading, you know, reading body language. <laughs> Those little quick, you know, responses that, 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 I, that people have. <laughs> and you can recognize why outwardly, you know, you, you get the smile. But that little quick response lets you know that something's going on that, about you. And so body language expert, that's what I want to be next. And so negative thoughts can exacerbate these anxious feelings. Negative thoughts can exacerbate this racing heart and all these difficult, all these things, all these physical things. And so therefore, the Bible tells us, don't even be anxious. Be anxious for not a thing. Can somebody say not one thing because anxiety watch this now when the bible says be anxious for nothing that anxiety is a state of worry that can de distract and paralyze believers write that down and what happens with negative thoughts those negative thoughts overgeneralization mind reading uh should statements all or nothing thinking all those different negative thought patterns stem from the spirit of fear. Stem from the spirit of fear. And God has not given us, come on somebody, the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and what? A sound mind. And so the Bible says be anxious, anxious for nothing, not one thing. Can somebody say, not, I need everybody on Facebook to type in not one thing. I need you to hashtag not one thing. I generally say not a thing, but let's say not one thing this morning. We are not to be anxious. And this word encourages us to give our fears to God. To, listen, to give and cast all of our cares to God because he is sovereign, ladies and gentlemen. Listen, you can trust in God's ability to bring deliverance even with negative thought patterns come on somebody not one thing not one thing he says the word says be anxious for not a thing it says but in everything in all things in everything every situation Paul is teaching us that in every situation, no matter how big or small it is, that situation should be brought to God. So when you feel the need to be to be a mind reader, when you overgeneralize, when you have all or nothing thinking, when you have those should statements, when those negative thoughts affect you, can somebody look at your neighbor and say, bring those situations to God in prayer? Can somebody say, I'm taking back my peace today? I am taking back my peace. And it says, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, with gratitude, with thankfulness, ladies and gentlemen, it says, let your request be made known to God. What needs to happen is we need to renounce these negative thought patterns. And that word renounce means to disown. I disown the, the listen, even the, the attempt to be a mind reader because God has given me the gift of discerning the spirits. I don't have to try to read somebody's mind. And a lot of people are consumed with what, uh, what, watch this now. A lot of individuals are consumed by what other people think about them. And the problem is they're not even thinking about them. I need somebody to shout amen. Consumed by what other people think about us. And at the end of the day, they're not even thinking about us. 
That's mind reading. That's a negative thought pattern. And, and when we become aware of that, we can truly see freedom. When we become aware of that, we can truly be, be delivered. Is there anybody, you don't have to put any hearts on the screen, but I need you to think about it. Is there anything we shared this morning that applies to you? If so, today is your day to see freedom. Today is your day to truly walk in peace. Today is your day to walk in deliverance. Let your request be made known to God. When it talks about let your request be made known, this means to make it known or to declare it, ladies and gentlemen. Make it known or to see. Listen, this is what happens. I see some amens and I see some absolutely. Here's the thing. You can only be healed if you keep it real. You cannot heal if you don't keep it real. And an acknowledgement of what needs to be changed, that's where it begins. That's where your healing begins, with the acknowledgement that there is something on the inside of me that needs to change because it's affecting my relationships. It's affecting my personal life. It's affecting my ability to thrive. Come on, somebody. It, listen, you can only be healed if you keep it real. And so let your request be made. I'm so thankful that this is helping. That Watch this now. That we're being honest that this is helping us. That we're being honest about what needs to be changed. Because one of the things that keeps people in bondage is a lack of honesty about what they need to change. Let your request be made known to God. Paul is saying that we should openly communicate what we need to God. And this lets us, and watch this now, this is, is uh, an attribute uh, of our trust in God. Somebody say, I trust in God. We talked about this in uh, uh, Sunday school yesterday about trusting in God. Listen, the Paul is encouraging us to openly communicate what we need, what we desire to God. Can somebody ask your neighbor, do you trust God? If you trust God, then let's renounce those negative thinking. If you trust God, God, then listen, cast your cares upon the Lord. If you trust him, give it to God this morning so you can be free. And the Bible says, and when you do that, it says, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, the peace of God, the trend, watch this now, write this down, peace of God, deep inner tranquility. <laughs> this is the Greek definition of, of uh, uh, or uh, Irene or uh, earring, uh, it is deep inner tranquility <laughs> that comes not from outward circumstances, but somebody safe from God. This peace of God, who is the God of peace, the Bible says, will guard your heart and mind. Come on, somebody. He will guard your heart and your mind. Watch this. Let me say this. When, and, and the peace of God. This is not just the absence of conflict, but a sense of well-being that, that, that transcends the, the situation. Come on, somebody. You can have peace even when there's conflict all around you. Come on, somebody. When you have the peace of God. Come on. When you know the God of peace. Come on. Listen, you can have peace when everything around you is going crazy. When you have the a peace of God. When you know God for yourself. Come on, somebody. And it says, which surpasses all understanding. Watch this now. This phrase surpasses all understanding means that the peace of God exceeds human reasoning. This will be the kind of peace that your friends won't be able to understand. Come on, somebody. This will be the kind of peace that those around you will not be able to understand because this kind of peace is not earthly, but it is divine. Come on, somebody. And so we'll guard your hearts and minds. What it means to guard, watch this. In other words, the peace of God Let's look at this word guard will protect your heart and mind. The peace of God will protect us 
from those negative thought patterns, ladies and gentlemen. And you got to go and cast these things, give these things to God through prayer. The peace of God will protect your heart and your mind, ladies and gentlemen. So somebody look at your neighbor and say, today, I'm taking my peace back. Today, I'm giving all those negative thoughts to God. Today, I'm giving it, I renounce it. I disown it today. Somebody say, this is the day I'm getting my peace back. And when you get your peace back, you get your life back. Can somebody shout amen? Amen. I'm getting my peace back. I'm getting my life back. I'm getting my mind back. Come on, somebody. It is only through our connection with God that we can experience this kind of peace. The world can experience this kind of peace. Listen, this, this peace that I have, the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, so how do I take back my peace? How do I take my back my peace when there is a tendency to have a negative thought? Well, first of all, mind reading. How do I take back my peace? The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse number 5, it says, therefore judge nothing before time. Remember, mind reading is thinking something that's, that, watch this, I'm thinking something is real. Thinking that somebody, you know, maybe doesn't like you and they're not even really thinking about you. The Bible says, therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes, who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the heart. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, we, we, listen, the Lord, when we are judged, what, listen, the motive and the intents of the hearts, every man's heart is going to be revealed. So the Bible Bible says, judge nothing before time. This verse reminds us not to assume we know what other people are thinking. That's one uh, application for it. Don't assume we let's let's be free today. Somebody said, I want to be free. I got to be free. Today is the day for freedom and liberty. Listen, don't assume that we know what others are thinking. You don't let this thing bother you all week. And some people for months. Some people for years, only to discover that they weren't even thinking about you. Come on, somebody. Somebody said, take your peace back today. I'm taking it back today. God, the scripture is also telling us that God is the ultimate judge. He knows the motives of people's hearts. A lot of us are worried about things that really we shouldn't be worried about. This is God's job. Come on, somebody. That is God's job. Listen, God is going to hold them accountable, even if they do have the wrong thoughts about us. But it's not our job to, 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 to make assumptions. Come on, somebody. It is not our job to make assumptions, to assume that we know what somebody else is thinking. If it's helping somebody, look at your neighbor and say, raise your hand because it helped me. Come on, somebody. It helped me. That's why I'm trying to use it to help you. Overgeneralization, Proverbs 24, 16. For a righteous man may fall seven times and rise again, but the wicked shall fall by calamity. What is this saying? That setbacks are a part of life, but they do not define us. Come on, somebody. You Listen, look at your neighbor. Say, a setback is opportunity for a comeback. Come on, somebody. So ladies and gentlemen, just because you missed it once, watch this now. Listen, failure is not failing until, unless you fail to get back up again. Can somebody say, I'm getting back up again? Because one failure does not make me a failure. I need you to make that personal this morning. One failure does not make me a failure, but this is an opportunity to learn and grow. Can somebody shout amen? Black or white thinking. My time is almost up. Philippians 4 and 8. Here it is. I'm taking back my peace. Philippians 4 and 8. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, if there is anything praiseworthy, somebody say meditate on these things things. So you got to have balance in your thought life, ladies and gentlemen. Instead of looking at situations as good or all bad, can somebody look at your neighbor and say, there may be some shades of gray, but don't allow your mind to go there. Listen, and consume you, ladies and gentlemen. Focus on the shades of truth. Focus on the positives. Folk, be more optimistic, ladies and gentlemen. And one way to set boundaries is to, listen, stop going to lunch with negative Nancy. Love negative Nancy, but stop going to lunch with them. Plant the seed of the word because the more, and I said this before, you know, I, I, when I used to go to lunch with some of my coworkers, they, they, all they were doing was saying negative things about 
the organization and, and even our supervisor. And in my mind, I'm like, I don't see what they're saying. I don't see this. But the more you listen to that kind of stuff, the more you allow the, those words to get into your gates, it'll start to penetrate your heart and it will affect your thinking and your behavior. I did not see what they were saying, but I realized when I started complaining, it was time for me to separate myself. It was time for me to have lunch by myself. Come on, somebody. I started having lunch in my office. Come on. Because I recognized with that what I was listening to was affecting my view. And I started complaining about things that, that really did not need complaints. So there are moments you got to set healthy boundaries. Love the people. But that don't mean, listen, sometimes you might have to stop going to lunch. When you recognize that, that, that these, this company is corrupting good character. Okay, there it is. There's a scripture reference. And so mental filter, we got to hurry. It says in Psalm 103 and 2, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. What this scripture is telling us? To focus on the positives. Focus on the good things. Focus on the blessings. Focus on God's benefits. Come on, somebody. Should statements. Number five, we're getting ready to go. Matthew 11, 28 and 30. Come to me. All you who labor and are heavy laden, if you're just coming on in order for you to understand where the tools that we're using, you're going to have to go back to, to a little bit in the, in the video. Uh, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This, this particular scripture encourages us to let go of all those, you know, unrealistic, rigid expectations of ourself. One way to apply it and find rest in Jesus, ladies and gentlemen. Let go of all those expectations of yourself, all those rigid. There's nothing wrong with being successful, nothing wrong with excellence. I'm a stickler for excellence. But that does not mean you will not make mistakes. It doesn't mean you want that, that everything's going to always go well. Lady Anderson encouraged me when we had our youth service last year. There were mistakes. But here's what Lady Anderson said to me. She said, when you have an event such as that, there are going to be, what's the word she used? I can't remember the word. But she said, there's going to be little bumps in the road. I'm going to say that. There's going to be going to be little bumps in the road. But Lady Anderson said it was a beautiful ceremony. It was a beautiful service. And ladies and gentlemen, so we cannot allow our minds to focus on where we got it wrong. But let yourself, listen, listen, thank God that you were able to do it in the first place. Let go of those rigid, think that rigid thinking. Let go of the pressure of shoes and embrace the grace of God. Come on, somebody. Somebody said, I'm taking my peace back and I'm embracing the grace of God. I'm taking my peace back. I'm embracing the love of God. I'm taking my peace back. And, and listen, we serve a God who knows that we're not going to always get it right. But thank God that we wake up every morning to new grace and new mercies. Can somebody shout amen and say, I'm taking my peace back. I am taking my peace back. Let me talk about Sarah. We got five minutes. Sarah had always been a girl who was always happy. But she got into a job where that was a lot of pressure. Family with a lot of pressure from family. A lot of personal expectations began to get her overwhelmed. And then this led to a cycle of negative thoughts and anxiety. After she received some mixed feedback at work, she started focusing more on one criticism than she did the overall feedback. Come on, somebody. And, and she went to her pastor and she was encouraged to pray and meditate on Philippians 4 and 6. And that reminded her that she should bring her worries to God. And this Motivational Monday broadcast is a reminder to bring your worries to God. I don't have to be a mind reader when I bring my worries to God. I don't have to overgeneralize when I bring my worries to God. I don't need should statements when I serve a God in the name of Jesus who is a God of truth. Come on, somebody. Listen, she took her pastor's advice, dedicated time to prayer and study of the word. And she began to practice gratitude and watch this, surrounded herself with, with people who thought like she thought. Surrounded herself with friends who were supportive. 
So ladies and gentlemen, this morning, you know, we become aware of what needs to change. You can take your peace back when you use the tools that I gave you from scripture to initiate change. And I want to encourage you today to declare negative thoughts no longer have power over me. Today on this motivation of Monday, I am taking back my peace. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 5 verses 4 and 5, for every child of God defeats this evil world and we achieve this victory through our faith. And who can win this battle against the world? Only those who believe that Jesus is the son of of God. For those who believe, I encourage you to declare, I win. I am victorious. I am taking back my peace. Negative thoughts today, as of today, no longer have power over me. As we get ready to close, we're going to have prayer on the call at 267-807-9611. Access code 266-590. I need you to put this on the screen. I need you to like and share and declare negative thoughts no longer have power over me. I need you to write this down and say it to yourself. Make it personal. Negative thoughts have no power over me. I'm taking back my peace and I'm taking it back today. Come on, somebody. Negative thoughts have no power over me. To God be the glory for the things that he has done. Uh, Evangelist Paulette Griffin, if you can, take us in with prayer. Join us on the call. 267 807 9611. Access code 266 Five nine zero. We are going in with prayer. God bless you. Join us on the call tomorrow morning. We'll be back live at five.